Okay, hello, good morning everyone, and I'm very happy to be here today. And now I want to invite you to travel with me some kilometers away from here to one of my favorite places in the planet, Mexico City. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place with a lot of vitality and 20 million of habitants. So imagine we are there having fun, visiting in museums, uh, historical places. And suddenly our party must end because this other sound starts playing. What this sound is telling us is that we have only one minute to go outside and find a closest midpoint to be safe. What this sound is telling us is that a wave front coming from an earthquake that is occurring at 1,000 kilometers away from here are very close to arrive to us and we need to be saved because the ground will start shaking. What this sound is telling us is that the invisible line between the life and the dead can be broken and, and at any moment. The, the early warning systems are very useful services to advertise the citizens that an extreme event uh, can arrive and at their houses, collapsing buildings, probably killing people. Also, uh, these are a very, very useful services. We cannot install it in every place of the planet because, because it needs an specific requirements to work properly. Uh, the earthquakes are one of the most common natural hazards. Every day we can record uh, hundreds of events, most of them with a very low magnitude to be filled by us, but few of them that can have a catastrophic impact, producing a lot of damage and uh, very high economical losses. And also we have a lot of knowledge about the uh, physical processes behind the earthquakes and, and the generation of those events. It remains as an unpredictable uh, phenomena because we cannot say when, where, and which magnitude the next event will have. And um, this is because in the solid earth sciences, we cannot effectively measure all the parameters, the physical parameters involved in these complex processes inside the subsurface. For example, the velocities, the false interactions, uh, the heterogeneities in the geological models, and so on. And it's here where the computational seismology becomes as a crucial tool for us, not only to understand, uh, but also to generate what if scenarios to quantify the impact of those events in our, in our cities and infrastructures. And here at BSC, in the Wave Phenomena Group, uh, in the case department, we are working in generate a new methodologies and a new tools to tackle this kind of, of phenomena uh, and to provide insights into the impact and the potential damage of these earthquakes after it right occur. So here is where I want to introduce you the urgent computing. The urgent computing refers to those processes that needs immediate uh, high priority for immediate computations because we are working with a strict deadline. Uh, we are using um, and we are trying to process um, um, almost mostly unpredictable events. And uh, we, are, uh, we need for those computations a lot of significant uh, resources. So in my group, we are working and proposing the urgent computing for natural hazards, linking together uh, the computing capacity of the, the supercomputers, the highly optimized simulation codes to, res to solve the wave propagation equations, the large data availability that we have in, coming from different sources on real time, and the inclusion of high-performance data analytics and machine learning to, to booster this time to solutions in the, framework, in the framework of the urgent computing. So in the recent years, we have been developing workflows uh, based on forward simulations, but also including uh, machine learning uh, solutions. 
And in a very close collaboration with the Workflows and Distributed Computing Group led by Rosa Badia, the computer science. So we are working in improvement these workflows to put it in an operational maturity level. And it's here that I want to, to take the opportunity to encourage the BSc uh, to be pioneer leading with us this uh, effort and um, to help us and uh, supporting us to develop the policies and protocols needed to make and enable this urgent computing access mode for the tier zero and tier zero one machines. Um, and also promoting around the other Euro HPC centers. So all of that, we only one purpose, that is um, use these supercomputers to save lives. So um, my last take home message is that the next time that you see in the TV or in the news that an earthquake is, uh, shake one part of our planet, uh, remember that here at BSE we are working very hard in make more robust line between the life and the death. Thank you very much for your attention.